Hi everyone, welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty, and today this is episode part two for Superman. So Superman part two, you can go back and watch the first episode if you missed it. And I'm going to take a buckshot approach really quick here with just some collector's items for you book collectors out there to start. And modern novels can be collector's items as well, which brings us to Enemies and Allies by Kevin J. Anderson. Great book featuring both Superman and... Batman, and that's the obviously the paperback edition. For those of you that go way back, we talked about Whit, we've talked about Whitman before, and here's a Whitman from the '60s. All right, so this is a prose novel that was illustrated. Uh, I think Al Plastino did it, but I'm not really a hundred percent certain. So Whitman put out this prose novel. There, were, there's actually another one. This is one of two. For you collectors out there, Superman smashes the secret of the mad director. Lots of fun. Has a wraparound cover. Uh, so the, fairly easy to find on eBay for you collectors. And modern, modern comic books. All right. So the death of Superman, which came out in the 90s, I think is the most commonly reprinted uh, s series from that era. It's everywhere. You can't go wrong with it. You know, this is obviously the trade paperback version. This was a good series, believe it or not. I was also fa uh, a fan of and enjoyed Superman for All Seasons, which this is the paperback collector's edition of that. I enjoyed that. Jeff Johns, who his name seems to be out there quite a lot, he did. This is a collection of Superman, Last Son of Krypton, Krypton and Superman's Secret Origins by Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, and John Seaball. This was from Action Comics, I believe. I love Gary Frank's artwork, by the way. Uh, Gary Frank, to me, is one of the modern masters of Superman. Now, Superman has been around 80 years. Superman first appeared, obviously, in Action Comics number 1 in June 1938. So, when Superman reached his 75th year, DC Comics put out this beautiful hardcover edition, compiling a wide variety of classic stories and so forth and this is worth your time to have it's a beautiful it's a beautiful hardcover collector's edition look at the interior cover uh you know i just think it's it's great i enjoy these compilations i think they're fun and of course action comics when action comics recently reached its 1000th issue dc celebrated that with a deluxe hardcover also reprinting stories from the 80-year history of The Man of Steel. Really good stuff to have uh, in your collection. And these are books that your, you know, your children can read. You can hand it to them. There's nothing unusual here. Collector's items. Neil Adams. Now, I consider Neil Adams and Kurt Swan and Wayne, Bar Wayne Boring originally, too, as my three favorite Superman artist. So this was a hardcover collection. Again, I love these compilations and reprinting one of Neil Adams' stories. And I bought this from Neil Adams at a convention. And of course, you can see he drew Superman on here on the front page in silver on a black page. So that's a really, really fun collector's items for you people out there that love original artwork. Now, speaking of Neil Adams as a collector, Superman 233, obviously one of the more important issues from the 70s. And when you're a collector, you do this. You you buy multiple copies, okay? So I'm not going to um, talk too much about a lot of the official collector's items from the 60s and 70s. I'm just going to show you some samples. This is uh, Action Comics from the 70s, and this is actually my favorite cover from that period because Nick Cardi did this, and I think it sums up Superman. You know, you see the child down here wearing the Superman shirt. Superman, of course, is um, catapulting himself up into the air, up, up into the sky. Superman! Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, a great... This is a great representational cover, and it's one of my favorites from that period. Great issue to collect. Now, of course, if you're familiar with Kurt Swan and Neil Adams, this is a Neil Adams, by the way. 
So check that out. And then Kurt Swan. Kurt Swan is really the iconic. Here's another Kurt Swan. Kurt Swan remains the iconic figure artist for the Superman series, as well he should be. Now, for you collectors out there, there's a lot of confusion over these two books. These are the first two Superman annuals. Now, this is the first one. These are early 60s, and then this is the second one. These are 80-page giants, so some of you may remember the 80-page giants. DC now occasionally will still put them out. This is the one. This was first, and this is the hardest one to find in really good condition. Mine's a little beat up. It's the only one I have, and... You know, this began that era of the 80-page giant that is so well-known for you vintage Superman or DC collectors from the 60s. This is hard to find in good condition, as I said. I'm lucky to have the one that I have. This has been reprinted, by the way, so be careful. There are facsimile editions out there. And Superman Annual number 1. This is one of the iconic 80-page giants. That came out during this period. It's almost a must-have issue for Superman collectors. And then of recent vintage, by recent I'm going back to the 80s, I think many of you are familiar with Alan Moore's and Kurt Swan, you know, the famous Whatever Happened to the Man of Steel or the Man of Tomorrow. This is the collected, one of the early collected editions of that two-part series. It widely available, still in print couple of classic Neil Adams I want to show you for you collectors out there. Neil Adams really changed the game a little bit. You know, he added a different a different depth to the Superman era. And you can see the way he uh, he drew his stories. There was there was emotion going on. There was a lot of action. And he really remains one of the best artists out there. I, I consider Kurt Swan and Neil Adams to be the best huge fan so here's some Kurt Swan traditional Kurt Swan you can't go wrong with Kurt Swan I love Kurt Swan this is one of my favorite from the 60s of course and you can see I'm just looking to make sure you can without the glare here um, you know Kurt Swan was another one of those great artists who you know he made the stories come alive you wanted to buy the comic book and read it when you saw the cover that's what it's all about and finally, we're going to talk about, really quick, let me take this out of the bag. I've talked about this before in other episodes. The material that you can find in the United Kingdom is highly collectible. So these are the early 60s Superman annuals. And they were usually printed in either black, black and white. Now this one has some color. And it, all, it also has, and it also reprints a classic Wayne Boring some color and some black and white in these hardbacks from the United Kingdom. Highly collectible material. I think they're great. And here is another one from the early 60s. And I love the cover on this one, too. And it's a wraparound cover. So these hardbacks from England also featured prose text. They would, they would feature little games that you can play. So they, they were marketing this for the younger audiences in the United Kingdom. And there were prose stories, of course, in here. In addition to comic book reprints and so forth, um, it just depends on what they were doing. Look at the end papers on this. So, you know, uh, eBay, again, is a re good resource. Abe Books, Abe.com, ABE Books. You can find these occasionally. Most of the time I find these hardbacks on eBay. The ones I'm showing you now, I actually purchased in London when I was there. So here's a Superboy, early, early Superboy. This is probably late 50s, early 60s. And again, you have, you know, the artwork is geared. Now this was black and white reprint. So the contents varied. Sometimes you would get full color. Sometimes you would get black and white reprints on this. There are some color panels in this particular issue. Uh, and then there's some where they just did, like here's a detective chimp, and they did it in green and black and white. Uh, you know, so it depends on, I think probably cost-saving cost initiatives were involved here. Uh, here's another detective chimp reprinted in here that was in color. So they didn't always reprint 
in the UK, these hardback annuals, were not exclusive to the title, Superboy or Superman, Batman or whatever. They would reprint other characters as well and, and market these for young readers. These hardbacks were not done in the United States. Again, this is United Kingdom material, and that that's what makes them so unique. You know, here in the United States, they pretty much did those 80-page giants, and that's why I love going to the eBay or when I was in, in England, as I mentioned, I found some of these hardbacks and I bought them immediately. Fun stuff. Superman forever, right? Now, Superman is still out there, is he not? He is. So just because we're doing this, here's the actual latest issue of Superman, which is written by uh, Brian Michael Bendis and drawn by Ivan Rice. Ivan's uh, artwork is spectacular. I am a fan of his artwork. Brian Michael Bendis is a good writer. Unfortunately, DC Comics right now suffers from poor editorial decision-making, which has been a problem with that company for a long time. Uh, and these books are not reaching an audience really at all. Um, but, you know, when you're a collector, you buy this stuff. Bendis is a good writer. It's the approach they're taking to the material that's flawed. And we're not going to talk about that too much more other than to say that leave it at that the the good years are past us are they not hopefully it'll come back you never know you have good they have good talent on these books you know right now it's not that the talent's not there it's the editorial and publishing directives that they've chosen to take that have emasculated the series now one of the things I want to mention here before we sign off on this episode, you'll note that I have these in Mylar bags. Most comic shops today, and even through subscription services, they do that. I do not, and I, and I do that, but I don't approve of the larger, what they call slabbing, you know, that a certain company that I won't mention does. And they also do grading. I'm totally opposed to that with modern comics. Um, they're... Their grading system is entirely flawed, you know, it, and I don't approve of it, and I don't support that. So um, I, I do agree that if you're going to collect comics, you can buy the Mylar bag and keep it like that. But here's the bottom line with these books. They're, you're supposed to do this, okay? Here's the latest issue of Superman, and what do you need to do with it? You need to do this. You need to read it, all right? This is what books are for. Pass it to your children. Take this, throw it away. Books were meant to be read. And these days, with digital technology, everything can be reprinted. So it's not that they're not collector's items. It's just the real purpose here is reading and understanding story structure and narrative. So I just needed to get that little bit out there because there seems to be, there seems to be this cultural trend. You know, it's a collector's item. It's not. Really, I mean, yes, I mentioned earlier, modern stuff can be, but by focusing on that, you're missing the point. You should be reading, and young people should be reading. These books should be handed back and forth. So there you go. That wraps up Superman. There's more I could say on Superman. Um, Superman is the, you know, my favorite pulp fiction hero, hero from that era. I consider Superman, as I mentioned before, number one with Doc Savage in the shadow. You know, uh, I think those are the great Pulp Fiction heroes. A little a little known thing that people don't talk about this a lot. You know, the Superman origin by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster is, in my opinion, the greatest science fiction story. You know, rocketed to Earth from the planet Krypton uh, as it exploded to save his life. He comes here under the yellow sun. Uh, his body physiology is such that the yellow sun gives him these extraordinary abilities. It's the greatest science fiction story. And, you know, unfortunately, DC has chosen to rewrite that story, reboot the series time and time again, and basically emasculate the character, which is unfortunate. Jerry Siegel and Joe, Seuss, Joe Schuster do not need to be rewritten. They never needed to be rewritten. Needed to put that out there as well. The story was fine the way it was. And anyways, Superman, one of the greats. Here we go. Vintage stuff, fun to collect. Keep your cape clean. Stay well. Stay happy. Feed your brain. Read a book.